This conference will now be recorded. Okay, I want to welcome everybody to the, Febu the February 18, 2021 town board meeting. Um, this is a uh, virtual go-to meeting. We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, on a very sad note, I would like people to stand for a moment of silence for uh, the young girl that unfortunately passed away this week due to a uh, a uh, weather-related accident. Um, and we pray for the family and, and for everybody else that's involved. Um, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, uh, we start with public input. Does anybody have anything that they wish to discuss at the town board meeting? Okay, let's move on. Administrative business. I need a motion and a second to accept the town board minutes of February 4th, 2021. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Uh, Bob made the motion. Jackie seconded. Francis, can you do the roll call, please? Yes. Yeah. Supervisor Palermo? Yes. Councilman Burke? Yes. Councilman Etzel? Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez? Yes. And Councilman Hunter? Yes. Okay. Um, approval of abstract number four. Uh, Francis, can you give us those numbers, please? Yes, it includes vouchers number 21 0166 through 21 0222 and totals $525,252.69. Okay. I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Francis, the roll call. Okay. Supervisor Palermo? Yes. Councilman Dick? Yes. Councilman Etzel? Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez? Yes. And, and Councilman Hunter? Yes. Okay. Um, budget modifications. I think we have three. Francis, can you please read those? Yes. The general fund, and this is for the uh, physical year 2020, increasing A1620.471 by $3,720 and decreasing A1620.465 by 3,720. The next one, general fund, increasing A1620.408 by $310 and increasing A1620.402 by $310. And police department increasing B3120.401 by $2,454 and increasing B3120.454 by $843 and decreasing B3120.472 by $3,297. And now, okay. 20, and now the 2020, excuse me? Go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. And the 2021 budget, general funds increasing A3021. It's the state aid for the court by $6,608 and increasing A1110.404, which is a JCAP grant 
by $6,608. Okay. Um, I'd like to um, just say a little something about that last budget modification. I want to thank um, Carol Guerin um, of our courts who went out and, and got this, um, another grant for us. Um, it'll have the, um, we will begin an additional walkthrough metal detector. So we'll have one at the front entrance and the back entrance. Um, some more metal shed shelving um, and PPE at the courthouse. So um, once again, I want to thank the, the ladies over at the courthouse and especially Carol, who uh, usually does this every year for us. So thank you. And now I need a motion and a second to approve our budget modification. I'll make the motion. I'll thank second. You. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Francis, the roll call. Yes, Supervisor Polino. Yeah. Councilman Burke. Yes. Councilman Etzel. Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez. Yes. And Councilman Hunter. Yes. Okay. Um, let's move on to our new business. Um, I need a motion and a second to accept the resignation of Christopher Sutherland. Uh, he's a, a part-time ACO officer that was effective as of February 6, 2021. I will uh, regretfully make that, um, that motion. Do I have a second? Second. I'll second. Thank you, Robert. Um, hey, Frank, Frank? Frank, yeah. Frank, uh, did anyone do like a, a little exit interview with him? Uh, no, actually, um, he handed in the stuff and um, I never got, I was never able to get back in touch with him. He was gone. Okay, because his letter was a little curious, I thought. And, uh, um, I yeah, yeah. Um, it did sound weird. I did have a, a discussion with Pam, um, and she explained to me most of the situation. Um, okay. It wasn't really anything bad. I, I know I looked at it and said, what the heck did you say to him? But um, it really, it, it isn't what it, it looks like. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, no problem. So I need a, we got the motion, we got the second. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call. Okay, Supervisor Palermo? Yes. Councilman Burke? Yes. Councilman Etzel? Yes. Councilman Hernandez? Yes. And Councilman Hunter? Yes. Okay. Um, we have um, here an authorization for the town board to a, approve this um, a cha uh, Chazen agreement what this is is um before i was the supervisor and I, it may go back as far as uh ralph caruso um they the i think it's eight towns and villages got together um when they were suing for the uh, pipeline and we all chipped in x amount of dollars um and so recently we've been uh monitoring certain flows um on on the water down there to the moon the creek and um we had a meeting about a month or so ago with the engineers and um they'd like to get at least another year out of it and possibly two and so what this is is a five thousand dollars to um to pay for those consultants and engineers um every town every town every person every municipality that's in the group is putting up the five thousand dollars to continue the uh, um, the survey. And Mr. So, Supervisor Joe McKay, I have no legal objection. Okay, and, and Joe, you were involved in this from the very beginning, correct? <clears throat> yes, of course. This goes back many years, um, but this particular provision was for monitoring uh, the Woodbury Creek and the tributaries um, and the municipal. Now are requesting that 
each municipality can contribute, I believe it's five thousand uh, dollars to continue to monitor the levels of the Woodbury Creek based upon the New York State DEC's water taking permit granted the curious. So this is a continuation of what had gone on before. Uh, I have no legal objection to the board adopting the resolution. Okay, thank you. So I'll make that motion. Um, I need a second. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Jackie. Um, any questions? Actually, this discussion, I just want to add on to the, um, to this, this, how important it is as Woodbury, as the town of Woodbury, for us to continue working on this. Because as Joe said, um, this goes back to the concerns that the drawdown of water would impact not only local homes, but it could also impact um, our local wildlife, um, as, especially the um, uh, you know, uh, fish and things like that that depend on the water and 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 the um, and the Mutna Creek. Um, the other thing is is that um, DEC made it very clear that if we didn't have prior levels established before pumping began, that um, we would not be able to prove that the drawdown was due to the pumping of water from the um, Mountainville well. So this monitoring, ongoing monitoring, is very important because it'll factor out like environmental conditions and things like that. So I just, um, I'm very happy that the town is continuing with supporting this study as it continues to establish a baseline before and after pumping began. Okay. Um, with that, um, Francis, can you give us a roll call, please? Yes. Supervisor Palermo? Yes. Councilman Burke? Yes. Councilman Etzel? Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez? Yes. And Councilman Hunter? Yes. Okay. I have uh, an added item uh, on the new business. Um, you know, I was um, I was talking to the town clerk um, I think last week after the village board meeting. And we were discussing that um, at that meeting, um, a group, the uh, We Are Woodbury, had gone to um, the village asking for a permit to uh, hold a parade. And as explained at that meeting, that the permit really comes through the town. Um, and so I had looked up the law to see exactly how it's run. and. Um, it, it allows for someone to go either to the chief of police or the town board. Um, and I spoke to the chief about this and we both came to the conclusion um, that it really belongs with the town board um, to administer the permits for any kind of um, uh, motorcade, parades, um, you know, things along those lines. And so after speaking with Joe, um, Joe McKay, uh, we also realized, uh, and I called Francis up actually the other day, and I appreciate her help on it, um, that there is no fee to have a parade. And so I spoke to Joe and we came up with a resolution. Um, we will be scheduling a public hearing at the next board meeting um, to um, revise um, the local law 221 in our town code, which deals with parades. Um, but right now we have a resolution before us, um, and I'll read that. Um, whereas chapter 221 of the town code allows upon submission of an application with the issuance of a permit, parades and motorcades to be held in the town of Woodbury, and whereas the town must carefully review each application to determine whether it is feasible to allow the proposed parade or motorcade to be held, and whereas parades and motorcades require the presence of the town of Woodbury police officers and or other town employees to ensure the safety of participants and spectators, 
And whereas the town incurred substantial costs in reviewing applications and assigning town police officers and or employees to parade or motorcade details, and whereas the town board has determined that in accordance with chapter 65 of the town code, the cost to facilitate any such private parades or motorcades should not be passed along to the taxpayer. Therefore, now therefore it be it is hereby resolved that the town fee schedule shall amend to include the provision that requires a $125 application fee and execution of an insurance indemnification escrow agreement sufficient to cover the town's actual costs and facilitating all privately organized parades or motorcades within the town. Um, and so I am going to make a motion to um, accept this resolution. Do I have a second? And then we'll have any discussion if anyone wants to discuss it. Oh, second I'll that. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Any 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 comments? Yeah, I just have discussion on it, Frank. Um, with regards to the parade, what um what has been the practice in the past? Um, I I didn't I didn't um I didn't realize well, people would just go people would just go to the chief of police and um, they'd end up using our police officers and we're not getting reimbursed to use those police officers. Uh, and they just went to the police department to get a to, to get a permit. And um, you know, there were times where we didn't even know about it until you know until it was either done or over. So um, I did call the chief up to speak to him about it. He does not want to be involved in this decision. He does really believe, and I believe, that it's a town board decision. Uh, we should be the ones allowing people to. Um, have these events in our town and um as you know earlier last year at some point um we had people that wanted to have a demonstration in town um right. they didn't have insurance they you know wanted to do the permit and we told them no unless they had the insurance so um i think these are things that need to come before the town board we need to know what's going on and um we need to um what do you call um, uh, approve or disapprove such a thing? And the way it would work is, if you're thinking of having a parade, you make sure you get to us with enough time. You need to show us that you have um, insurance. You know, you got to bring us, you know, the insurance paperwork, and you have to pay for the fee. And then you'll, at that time, uh, we would ask the chief of police and and the person who's asking for the uh, parade how long they think it's gonna take, how many officers we may need, and we'll come up with a number and they'll pay for it. And if they don't, they're not having the parade. So I guess I guess the, the reason why I'm asking the question is I just wanted a distinction between parades that are done in the community, town parades. Um, so This is if, for private, this is for private parades. This is not for uh, a town, like the Memorial Day Parade. It's, it's sanctioned by the town. It's by our veterans. Uh, this isn't a private, you know, event. These are, you know, this is to prevent uh, private personnel that want to all of a sudden decide to hold a um, a parade or, or demonstrations or things like of that nature. So I guess in clarification, in clarification, okay. I'm sorry. Maybe I can just give a little. Uh, uh, clarification here. Um, the yes, this this is simply to amend the town's fee schedule. Uh, it's right. contemplated that uh, uh, the board will have. And and by the way, this is something that came up recently. Uh, the town supervisor asked me to look into it. Of course, it was the holiday weekend this this past weekend. So I sent uh, the board an email this afternoon after we had had an opportunity to do some preliminary uh, research. So there are steps related to this. Um, one is that the t I can prepare, I will be preparing uh, a, a draft local law that would amend the town's current um, uh, town code provision 
concerning um, issuance of permits for parades and motorcades. Right now, it is the chief of police that has the authority to do that. The supervisor has asked whether or not we could amend that local law to uh, make that ultimate determination to be made by the, the town board. You know, and that is something that we can do by the local, uh, by amending the local law. Um, certainly when we amend the local law, I suggest to the board that we should consider incorporating a lot of the uh, provisions that we currently have for other um, use of town property, such as the, uh, the ball field. Right now, when uh, Little League and the soccer teams request to use the field. Um, a few years ago, I, I prepared an agreement uh, that um, Joe G and Zaro uses, and that the uh, the someone has to apply to use the field. They need to provide a certificate of insurance, a hold harmless, and indemnity agreement. Uh, so this would be moving toward a local law that has those simple provisions. So that if somebody wants to have a parade on town property, you know, they pay the fee. That The fee, by the way, the $120 fee that's stated in the resolution is a kind of a placeholder. The board can determine what the fee should be. Um, but the more important provisions would be that if somebody wants to hold a motorcade uh, uh, parade on town, that they would need to provide a certificate of insurance to the town, execute a hold harmless agreement, um, such as the town, and, and agree to provide uh, an escrow to cover the town's expenses in providing uh, services for that private event. Excuse uh, me, one second, Joe. Excuse me. Clara, can you please mute everybody? I hear children in the background. The only one that's unmuted are Francis, you, and Joe. Okay. All right. All right well, let me get, okay. Let me get to a quieter place. So essentially, what I'm what I'm explaining is that this would be similar to any other time where uh, um, someone wants to use town property. Um, Holds harmless agreement, some kind of insurance, and some kind of an application fee. Um, right now, in our code, uh, under Chapter 65, we have provisions that also, were any time that someone seeks an approval or an authorization from the town board that uh, requires or, in, or, or the town incurs some kind of ins uh, expenses to pass those expenses along to the applicant. So. We do not have an amended local law as yet. I'll be preparing that. Uh, in the interim, as part of the town's inherent police powers, where we do not wish to incur costs based upon a private parade, and that's that's a key here, the private parade, but we would require someone to uh, provide uh, some type of a deposit uh, to cover the expenses of either the town police department or perhaps the town parks department, whatever might uh, be required to provide security and some kind of services at this parade. Since we don't, this since this recently came up, we don't yet have a draft amendment to the local law yet. What I'm suggesting is that the town board can simply adopt uh, an amendment to the schedule of fees to require that a, a, an application fee and an escrow be posted until such time as uh, the board can take action to approve it. And that's that's essential. And and again, it's it's it akin to any private organization seeking to use town property. It's different when the town actually endorses or promotes a parade where the town organizes it, the town, in those instances, the town will already have insurance. And under the town budget, they will have already approved uh, the payment for town employees, the police department, et cetera. So this is, this is 
purely for private uh, organizations or private individuals that would like to have a parade. Okay, thank you, Joe. Because I think I think there was um, I was a little confused with if let's say for example you have a community group that wants to do a parade. Um, so I guess that brings me to my my thoughts on this. So I I, I understand permits are are necessary. I know the village does the permits. Um, I definitely understand the liability coverage. Um, and then um, but with regards to if it let's say. So I guess my the recommendation would be that if you're a private, if you're if you're Woodbury residents, that you should coordinate with the that you should coordinate with the with the town to do a parade, right? This shouldn't be like an independent because if you don't coordinate with the town, then essentially you're looking like a part of private parade, right? Is that kind of like what we're saying here? So I just wanted yeah. to be clear. Because I know last year it was brought to the board. There was a, a Woodbury resident that wanted to do a rally um, through Woodbury, and the resident was denied um, because he wanted to do a parade. And he was denied, and not denied, but said that he would have to incur cost. And so essentially, the resident did not want to do this. So this is the second time we're having this situation brought up. And I think that it just needs to be clear if you are, if you're like a resident or you're a resident of Woodbury, that it has to be coordinated with the town because someone has to incur liability for this parade. So Correct. I, I think that's what makes it confusing because if you have residents making a parade for residents, it would, it would make sense that we would support it. But if it's not being coordinated with the municipality, then you're on your own and now it's private. So then you have to pick up the liability. Nobody wants to pick up the liability that they're not. Um, and I think that's where there's some confusion. So essentially, yeah. my, oh. my feeling is, is that if any resident wants to wants to br do a parade, that it should be coordinated under a municipality, whether it's the village or it's the town. It should be coordinated with one of the departments so that the parade becomes part of the municipality and it's endorsed by a municipality. So then it's not an independent private. So I just want to make that clear so that um, people understand the difference and and why we're doing, you know, why we're having this discussion to begin with. There's just, I think there's too many different moving parts. And um, with this parade, it, with any parade, we have to have it has to be adopted through a municipality to be covered so that there's the liability is covered under something yeah but what you're saying to me now, is if, if, if I, a private group of people want to have a have a parade and they they want right. to start talking with the town but now the town's responsible for whatever happens in the parade i don't believe that that should be true no, I think, uh, we're here to protect the we're right. here to protect the residents right but let's say for example the resident if the resident wants to do if the resident wants to Jack, would you, Jack, would you mind if I interject just a, a little bit to, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt it, so I can just kind of clear some of this up. The, the reason that the town would be involved here is because the town uh, has the police department who are ordinarily in, involved in providing security and traffic control for any kind of parade. Uh, because uh, the village of Woodbury is essentially coterminous uh, except for the village of Harriman with the town, uh, they have jurisdiction over the roads. So this is really a process where both the town and the village would have to cooperate in issuing any uh, permits for parades, assuming that they are on, you know, so if they were completely on town property, it would be completely within the town's jurisdiction. If it's along some road that passes a village road and town property, then we would both be involved. But um, based upon, I had some discussions with the town clerk today, and my understanding is that essentially uh, when someone re requested information to have this parade with the village, uh, the village attorney provided the same advice to the village that I am providing to the town. So there's really no discrepancy here. Um, this would have to be a uh, any kind of parade really has to be something that's coordinated through both the village and the town, meaning that the village would 
has jurisdiction over the roads for the most part. Um, and the town has uh, the police department. So this would be something where the applicant would need to essentially get approval by both the town and the village. However, the town's involvement is to the extent that it would be on town property or would it would involve the town police department or potentially the town uh, department of public works or parks department um, to provide some kind of service. So both the town have and the village each have their own jurisdictional um, oversight of these permits. It would depend upon where the, the parade is going to be, whether it's completely on town property or on town property and village roads, et cetera. So this is a situation where the town and the village would have to work together uh, to um, issue a permit and to ensure that either the town or the village's uh, village gets reimbursed for any personnel that it has to uh, deploy uh, for the parade. Um, it's a little complicated, but um, it's simply saying that neither the town nor the village should have to supply the services of its employees, whether they're the police department or public works or or parks department. Um, to to anyone who's organizing a private private parade, we know that the town sponsors certain parades through the town. That would be different because the town already has its own uh, insurance, and the town and or the village um, already, um, you know, in their budgets provide for the cost associated with those parades. So this would be for private organizations only, and it would be a way for the town and the village to coordinate to ensure that any private organization that wishes to have a parade pays some kind of fees to the town and or the village and provides insurance uh, uh, to ensure that there's uh, the town and the village are held harmless. And you know, this is why people hate attorneys uh, the attorneys are the ones that care about all this stuff, but I can tell you that based upon my understanding of what the village attorneys have indicated, the village attorneys and I are in lockstep and we agree uh, as to what should happen. Um, That's more than anybody okay. wanted to hear. Okay. Um, are you okay with that, Jackie? I mean, we have to have a process here, Jackie. I can't have no, people just wanting to hold parades or, no, or events, um, and and it needs to be adhered to. And I mean, and and don't forget, if you know, because I'm reading some of the things here about the St. Patrick's Day parade. Um, you know, they got to provide the insurance to us. They got to provide the insurance to the village as well, um, because it's going to be on village roads. Um, they've got to pay for the, um, if, you know, to block the three roads that the village has to do, and they got to pay us to do this. It's, it's not just a simple matter of doing what they want to do, and they got to have insurance. That's the most important thing. You have to have the insurance, and if you don't have the insurance, you're not having the parade, plain and simple. We need to protect the people of Woodbury. That's what it's all about. And, you know, uh, obviously we're seeing things coming up now. Uh, that we never really had before. And so that's what brings on, it opens people's eyes up and opened my eyes up. And uh, so I went and did some research and I realized that we are fully covered. And so we need to do that. So wow. that's what this is about. Okay, I, 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 I mean, listen, um, you know, when I'm gone, um, meaning when I'm retired, <laughs> not gone, gone, uh, um, hey, listen, you guys can do what you want to do with the law. But right now, um, as a supervisor, I take my responsibility very seriously. And I'm not going to have um, just organizations decide that oh, we're going to have a parade today and we'll just do it. It doesn't work that way. Uh, everybody follows the rules. That's why we have them. And sometimes you don't realize those rules are a little lax. And so you got to tighten them up. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. 
that's what the purpose. But today's thing is strictly to um, provide a fee for uh, issuing a permit. We, we hey, we charge fees to have a, um, um, a a garage sale. I mean, we have fees for things that people want to do. This is just one of them, and so we're. Um, we, we, we realize that we have no fee for this particular event, and so we're, we're making a fee. That's all. That's what it's about. That's what tonight's thing is about. Okay. So it's specifically the, the permit? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Um, I'm getting some things. I just want to answer some of these people. Uh, someone asked... Uh, the parades for an hour, how much will that cost? I have no idea. I got to speak to the chief. Uh, but you can't just pay for the police. You got to have a, you got to bring in a, a, um, a, veri a, a verified uh, insurance policy. Um, and it's got to be under the person that's holding the parade. Um, but, you know, it's not, you can't just pay for it. You got to have, uh, you know, there, there would be things involved. In this particular instance, because I think they're referencing um, the St. Patty's Day parade, um, and it's uh, my questions are: Who's going to be in it? Um, are you going to have bands? Are you going to have uh, a, a waiting line like we do for the uh, Memorial Day parade? Where are those people waiting to march in the parade going to be? And they're going to be on on uh, school property. Well, then you got to go get a permission from the school to be on their property. I mean, it's not just, you know, uh, you know, I heard comments, you know, well, it's just a parade. Why, why are you doing this to us? Well, we're not doing it to you. Um, we're doing it to protect the town. And um, there are rules and there are laws and there are reasons for those rules and laws. And you got to abide by them. If you don't want to abide by them, then go have a parade in your backyard or on your front lawn. I don't care. So that's, that, that's my two cents on it. So anyway. I made the motion. Did someone make a second somewhere? No. I'll second it. Thank you, Tyler. Francis, can you do the roll call, please? Yes. Uh, Supervisor Palermo? Yes. Councilman Burke? Yes. Councilman Etzel? Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez? Yes. And Councilman Hunter. Yes. Okay. Um, do we have any old Frank, business? Frank, yes. uh, wow. Frank before, this is Tom. I'm sorry. I, now that this is, I just want to make one small comment. I've been listening to what everybody had to say, and, it's, you know, everything is explained, pro I think, probably. I understand it completely. I just want everybody to know, because um, based on what we're hearing with this, um, I don't want people to take it the wrong way or think that they're – Actually, what we're trying to do is deny people. That's not what you said, and that's not what the board. Uh, this this mem board member of the board feels. It's it's like the uh, past week we uh, attended the town um, the um, parks committee meeting. There are so many different things that are going to be going on. Hopefully, once this pandemic lifts, we're kind of like all stuck in this mode. But I mean, with all these different plans and all these different um, activities that we already have in place as a town through the Parks Committee and Joe G and Zero. Um, I, some of these suggested parades or whatever gatherings that they want to have and how they want to pursue it as, uh, you know, as com um, committee, uh, not committee, but as the residents of the community, um, I suggest that maybe some of these things before they make a suggestion um, and, and advertise for it or throw it out, I, I would say go to the Parks Committee meeting and speak with the Parks Committee and with Joe. See how maybe there's something that could be that they they come up with an idea that they had that might be really good that we just didn't, no one else thought of, and maybe put it together with something that's already being put in place to make it even better. And I'm looking at this as, you know what, you start thinking in that way, all of a sudden, that's how the community comes together. Right now, it seems like, well, we want to, you know, the 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 belief I'm, I'm reading from all of this is that you got people saying, well, I want to do what we want to do, what we want to do, and you, you know, we don't want to do it with you or anything like that. If you, if we truly want to do it as a community, then 
that's where I think the the, the uh, discussion should be had first because there is so many things that are on the on the on the plate for the Parks Committee with Joe already, and there's so many dates in the on the calendar that are already in place. I mean, listen, we'd all we'd all we'd all like to have something for the for the young people in the community. Everybody would. Um, so that's just my little two cents to that also. So, um, I'm, uh, that's all I wanted to say, but thanks. Um, I'd like to add to that, Tom, um, you know, not everything occurs through the parks either. You know, um, uh, my office is open all the time and my phone number, my email address, you know, you got, you want to hold something, uh, come in and see me. I'd probably tell you how to go about it the right way instead of you trying to do it the wrong way and then you think everybody's against you. You know, uh, I don't deny or tell people no or whatever. I, I just stri strictly guide them as to the right way to do it. Um, and unfortunately, this isn't happening in town. Um, people think they can do whatever they want to do and there's no repercussions. Um, but there are and it makes it a lot easier and a lot smoother to go through if you just come talk to me and the supervisor and the supervisor's office and I'll explain it to you. There are people that are online here that I see who have called me to ask me for and for some guidance. And I gave it to them. You know, uh, I didn't hold it back. I didn't tell them no, this, that, or that, whatever. If you call me up, I'll be honest with you and, and deal with me the right way. And you'll get the right advice and, and instead of just thinking you can do what you want to do, because th that's never going to work, not in this town. So um, with that, um, and as I said, not everything is through the parks. There are things that don't go through our parks that people want to do. But as I said, just give us a call. We're more than glad to talk to you anytime. Um, all right. Old business. Anybody got any old business? Yeah, I just have a uh, question regarding the generator for the rec building. Any uh, news on that? Yes, I spoke to Joey today. Um, you know, with the weather, they haven't been able to get out here. Uh, but they are sending us the contract uh, to sign. Um, and uh, we've got to give them half the amount. Um, and then they'll be in. They'll do what they got to do. And when it's all done and cleared, um, uh, by Al Fusco and and gives us the okay. We'll uh, send them the second half of the check. But yes, we I, I did speak to Joe and asked him to give them a call, um, and he did that this week, and that's the update that I received. So we're probably looking at like March or April. Probably, I would think to be completed. You know, with the snow on the ground and all this other stuff, it's you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank God we don't need it right this minute. All right, that's it for me. Okay. Anybody else with old news? Old business? Uh, yeah, Frank. Yep, I got something, Frank. Um, I know a couple of uh, meetings ago, I had talked about the sales tax that we were going to wait for the fourth quarter. Well, we did receive it. I was talking with the ladies in the office. And I just wanted to report that for 2020, we received the fourth quarter. And uh, it's, it was good news in the fact that in light of the businesses being closed, um, in the beginning of the pandemic and then opening under, you know, restrictions. Um, we had no idea what the financial effects of the pandemic would be at that time, as we all know. Um, sales tax is the largest revenue uh, in the police um, communications fund, um, with the exception of the property taxes. So that being said, that was a very positive, that was very positive for us. Um, based on what our we budgeted in 2020, um, we were within $10,000 of what was budgeted. So based on everything that we, you know, that happened for the past year, that, that was some uh, good news that we received. So I just want to let everybody uh, give an update on that because uh, that was good. Thanks. Um, actually, Tom, to be more accurate, it was, I think it was just under 10, uh, just under 1%. And yep. which is, which is tremendous considering the fact that um, somewhere in, in uh, the mid year, um, we were we were anywhere between um, 10 and 15 percent down, um, and um, it really came through for us the, the latter part of the year. Uh, and to be only down one percent was fantastic. So, um, you know, kudos for the, for the stores and, and the shops uh, 
in the county. And it's not just Woodbury, it's the entire county. So um, thank God for those things. Yep. Jackie, you were going to say something? No, I was just going under old business just to let the community know that we're continuing our work on the pool and we're very excited about, you know, hopefully getting started very soon with um, with um, distributing the bids. So um, just as updates, you know, once we get more concrete timelines, we'll have that out for the community. Um, I'd like to, um, on that subject, state that we get calls every day uh from companies um asking to get uh, copies of the uh, specs um which is very encouraging um i think we've got to be I, I i'm hoping for at least 10 or more companies bidding on this uh which makes it very competitive and um i'm i'm, I'm excited i'm looking forward to it you know so um the bids close on uh the 15th and we'll be opening them up on the 16th of march and we'll know from there Okay, um, moving on to um, department reports. Uh, Francis, can you please read the supervisor's report for um, January. Uh, January? Yeah. Yes. Um, the supervisor's report for January 2021 with receipts totaling $8,523,072.50. And disbursements totaling nine hundred and ten thousand four hundred and four dollars and thirty seven cents. Thank you. Um, I need a motion and a second. As you know, I can't make that. So I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jackie. Um, and with that, uh, I would like to say um, I want to thank uh, our new tax collector, Karen who um, Karen Poggio, who um, did all of this, um, did a great job. Um, it's always nice to have a good tax collector. And we've had a really good one for 33 years. And you know what? We didn't skip a beat. So I'm very happy with the town board and its decisions. And it's really, really a pleasure to have that. I've also been told um, in her report that the town um, the town has been made whole uh, which means that we've collected uh, every nickel of our um, taxes that needed to be collected so thank you to the residents of the town of Woodbury we appreciate that as well as the businesses um, okay did we vote on it yet uh, I haven't done the roll call but you did vote on it okay give me the roll call Okay, Supervisor Palermo. Yes. Councilman Burke. Yes. Councilman Etzel. Yes. Councilwoman Hernandez. Yes. And Councilman Hunter. Yes. Okay. I did receive the town clerk's report for January uh, 21. Uh, the ACO report for January 2021, the police communications report January 2021, the library um, re uh, minutes and uh, director's report for uh, January, um, I guess 26th. the 26th and the 22nd yeah. is what it's saying, right? I think uh, it should only be saying the 26th. Okay. Uh, Parks Committee Minutes, um, January 19th, uh, 2021. I've got the Parks, Buildings, and Grounds Report for January 2021. Beautification Committee on February 4th, 2021. A letter meeting that, a letter stating that the meeting was canceled and the budget versus actual for January 2021. Um, there was something I wanted to um, bring up. I know I usually bring it up every year, and I'm going to talk about it now for a second or two. Um, our police department wrote 661 citations last month. That's telling me that people are not 
obeying the traffic laws in this town. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a number this high. And so kudos to our police department and to our officers that are out there. Uh, it means that they're actually out there working, uh, which we expect them to be doing anyway. But um, if you are driving in this town and you think that you can speed, go through lights, go through stop signs, whatever you think you can do out there that you're not supposed to be doing, well, don't because they're looking for you. And um, I would suggest that you start slowing down and taking it easy, especially in this weather. I mean, this was written in January. The, road, the roads ain't that great in January. So please slow down and take it easy. That's all I have to say on that because they are writing tickets. All right. Um, board board meeting board member comments jackie go ahead okay i just um want to say that um the woodbury art council met um this month i was very excited that we were able to meet on february 9th we had all of our previous members back on board and um they're going to we're going to be meeting again on february 25th at 7 p.m i'll be posting our um, link if you are interested in um, joining the Woodbury Art Council or if you would like to work on any projects with the Woodbury Art Council. We, are, we have a group full of artists who are looking to um, support local artists, to engage the community in art, and to um, encourage other people to explore the arts. So that's one of our, um, one of my announcements. The second is, the Climate Smart Community Task Force met um, this month also on February 10th. Um, it was a small group, but we were excited to have uh, Kate Schmidt from the Orange County um, Community Task Force for Agriculture and Land Use. She was on the meeting. We went over um, the uh, Climate Smart uh, checklists of things that projects that we can do as a town to allow us to become certified as a as a climate smart community um, some of the projects can only be done in town just like some projects can only be done in the village and then hopefully as the village and the town continues to work towards their pledge there are some projects that we could do um, unite we could unite and do together so the hope is, is as the village begins working on theirs and the town is working on ours, that um, we're covering areas that are under our jurisdiction. So just so that if I know that uh, when I talked about this online, I think people were confused that there were that there was division. And what I try to explain is, is that because we're two different municipalities, we both have to have our own task force. And then we can bring those task force together to do joint projects and even do more projects with the county. So um, if you're interested in attending the um, Town of Woodbury's Climate Smart Community Task Force, we're having our next meeting on March 10th at 7 p.m. And I'll be advertising that information also. And then lastly, the Jewish Family Service, we're gonna be having, the town's gonna be hosting the um, volunteer we're thanking volunteers on um, February 23rd from 10 to 12, and that's going to be at the senior. It's going to be a drive. Correct. Dri drive by thank you at the senior center. So um, we want to always acknowledge the um, the Jew the uh, volunteers that help with the Jewish Family Service. I know Neil Kraus has headed that program for years, and we're always very thankful for the work that he does um, as a volunteer in the community. So. Um, that's it for my announcements. I do want to say this, that um, I think over the past year, a lot of people in the community has done a lot to, um, to, to step forward out of their comfort zone, to volunteer, to help the community, to really bring forth good stuff. Um, and I just want to thank all volunteers, uh, regardless of um, what misconceptions or tensions exist. I really want to thank all volunteers who really come out and come out of their comfort zone rather than going home and 
just staying home, really just going out of that comfort zone to to help and to make other people happy. So I want, I, on behalf of the board, I really want to express that, you know, moving forward, you know, as a volunteer, I love volunteerism. Um, I do it all the time with, with you know, my teens. Um, I just want to encourage people to continue volunteering and, and for the board to continue to support and to look for ways that we could support the volunteers in the community also. Okay, thank you. Tyler. Um, the only thing I have is I attended the Moodna Creek um, Watershed Intermunicipal Conference uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, it was my first time and I found it very interesting and hope to uh, continue to participate in that in different projects. But uh, yes, so that's all I have for this week. Okay, if you wish to... Um actually if you wish to be an active member um i can make that change um and you can take my place I'm gladly you know i mean i can go again okay. but you would at least become a voting member when okay. You go. okay yeah i didn't know how it uh, how it worked and i just attended the the meeting and uh i found it very interesting and uh, enjoyed it so yeah, they are. They're very good. I, I, I've enjoyed it for the last few years. Jackie and I belong to it for, what, three, four years now, and uh, at least I've been. Um, and so um, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly pass that on to you. It's not a problem. And I did, I did attend that virtual um, Energy Smart or the meeting, that, but I didn't know you were having a meeting, Jackie, so <laughs> you can contact me for the next one that you have. Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm excited that you attended it. Thanks. Okay. Um, and just a um, point of note, I got a call today from uh, Neil Krause, who said that um, when we do the uh, thing for the um, Jewish Family Services, um, that uh, they'll also be uh, members of the Monroe uh, group as well. So uh, we'll be thanking two, two towns, which will be very nice. Okay, um, uh, Bob Hunter. I'd just like to uh, say a big thanks to the highway department and buildings and grounds for doing a great job as usual, keeping our roads and sidewalks open during the huge snowstorm. It's uh, a vital job to do and as usual, they did it in a great fashion so uh thanks to them that's it okay uh tom mr burke yes okay um i attended the uh parks committee meeting two uh two evenings ago and uh one of the a few of the things that were brought up but the most uh, one of the most important ones uh was the fact that it was there was discussion held regarding the reservoir uh, up at the res and people walking out on the ice. Um, there are um, red flags that are placed on both sides of the res. Um, so telling people whether or not this, the uh, I, I, ice is um, safe. Um, if you see the red flag, then that's not it's not safe. Then it shouldn't be out there. Um, there was also discussion, and you will be seen if if it's not there today very shortly. There's going to be some red um, safety ladders um, just to be used in, in the event of an emergency situation where uh, it was noted by a few people who attended the meeting. It was on the news. I don't know if anybody else picked it up. Um, I think it was, I believe, I don't know if it was Long Island or Westchester. I'm not sure, but they had uh, somebody was in trouble and they had a, um, um, a safety ladder, a red safety ladder. So we're going to. They're pursuing that to put them up by the res, but uh, make, uh, for everybody out there, um, take a look at the res when you're there and you'll see that the uh, flags are out, whether or not that's um, it's allowable to be out on the ice if it's safe. And uh, also, um, I also want to say something about the buildings and grounds and the work that they've been doing, the job with all the storms that we've had. It's um, it's, an, it's an unbelievable tireless job the, the uh, time and effort that they put in and they're always at it and um, I know a few mornings in the storms when I was on my way to work at 4:30 or 5 in the morning 
um, I would shoot down through town and they they were in uh, working on the sidewalk or, or uh, in the parking lots for the for uh, the police and the uh, ambulance and also for the uh, highway uh, fire I mean the Highland Mills fire uh, fire department so um, they're doing an outstanding job and I want to thank them and Joe for um, for all their work too and that that's it for me tonight okay just um a quick talk on what Tom um, brought up with the ice skating. I did contact our insurance companies and um, they do not recommend allowing ice skating on, on a lake like that, that we have that's, that's not manned. And, and we don't hire people to man it. So um, there is no ice skating on that res, which is why we have the red flags up. Um, and 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 it it should be taken very seriously. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever fallen through ice. I did one time. Um, thank God it only went up to my knees, between my knees and all. But it's a very harrowing experience. It's very scary, um, and it's tough to get out of it. Um, and you know, I was fortunate. It wasn't deep, and I was able to get out. But. Um, you're taking your life in your hands when you go out there. On a, on, a, on a nicer note, we are looking into, we do have a roller rink. And we are, the town is looking into the feasibility of making that into an ice skating rink during the winter. Um, it is a subject that they are working on. And I'd like to uh, be able to give updates as, as, as they come through with stuff like that. but. Um, I think that would be a tremendous activity for the community and for the town. Um, I know I worked a um, ice skating rink for the town of Orange, Orange Town um, when I was just a teenager. And I know it's impossible to envision me as a teenager, but yeah, I did that. Uh, it's a little more complicated than we think of just throwing water on, on the ground and skating on it. Um, you will need attendees. Uh, you will need people working it. Um, you will need shifts, a um, little warming station, the whole nine yards, which we have all of that up there. Um, and so I hope that the Parks Committee does come up with something for this. I hope the town does approve it in the future, uh, because I think that that is and was a tremendous experience for me and for the community um, in Orangetown. Uh, it's, it's just it's a great thing to do in the winter. And I think that we would be providing a very safe environment to go skating in so uh i'm kind of looking forward to the town doing something along those lines um i spoke to um phil morello today uh we've been in contact with each other i'm noticing that the state is opening up um outdoor recreational facilities um as well as indoor uh facilities and I feel very positive that um, unlike last year, I think we will have a Memorial Day parade. I think we can do it safely. Um, and I think that it'll take um, a lot of coordination, but I think it can be done. I spoke with him about it today. Um, and the reason why we're in contact now is because he's got to put together you know, a booklet that they do every year and they get, um, donations from uh, businesses and all um, and he let me know that he was the only one going out there getting those things so um, unless you hear from him um, he, he asks that you, you, you give the donation directly to him um, and I'm kind of working with him on this so um, I'm very happy to announce that and I'm going to be looking forward to it it's a very nice event every year uh, that this community puts through and it did bothered me a lot last year that we had to close it so i'm really looking forward to um being able to do it this year so i don't have anything else to talk about because that's all that there is i will ask for a motion oh uh, you know what i do want to ask the board something do you want to go back to um meetings in person starting in either march or april I'm asking the board for your opinion. Personally, I would like to do it again. I'd like to wait till April. 
Okay. I'm going to wait. April? Yeah. Jackie? Yeah, I'm fine either way. Tom? Uh, hold, uh, I hope. I, yeah. I didn't get that. Tom. There? You hear me? Yeah. Yep. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. About, sorry about that. Okay. Um, I'm fine with going back to April. Um, I think we should follow, um, just continue on and see where the governor goes with this. And if we can, if he's going to continue to open up and, and, um, uh, to certain, uh, venues and we can get ourselves in person, uh, by, uh, by April, um, safely, uh, I would be for that. Okay. Well, you all are allowed to have them, um, in person meetings, um, as long as you can keep it under control, which I think we can. Um, we don't normally get a lot of people, and I would probably have it up at the um, up at the right. reservoir um, until right. further notice. But that's where I would have it because we, yeah. we can hold over 100 people, and um, we don't get more than 10, 20 people max. So uh, I mean, total. That's including us um, and a cameraman. So <laughs> um, I, I I'm glad. I'd, I'd like to really start doing it again in person. So. I'll, I'll figure on um, April, our first meetings in April, uh, and then the next two will still remain virtual. Okay? With that, I need a motion to close. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay, folks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Good night. Good night.